Today, we celebrate the women of the world who are leading their countries and communities through the urgent crisis caused by COVID-19. Over the past year, countries with women leaders are among those that have suffered fewer deaths and put themselves on track for recovery. Women's organizations have filled crucial gaps in the provision of services and information on the pandemic, especially at the local level. And women peace builders have played a vital role in public health messaging in low trust and conflict affected communities. 70% of frontline health and care workers are women, many from racially and ethnically marginalized groups and at the bottom of the economic ladder. Yet, even as women have played critical roles during the pandemic, we have seen a rollback in hard-won advances in women's rights. The regression harms women and girls above all, but it also harms everyone and all our work for peace and prosperity. In this decade of action to deliver the Sustainable Development Goals, we must turn things around. As we look to this year's Generation Equality Forums in Mexico City and Paris, we have many challenges to overcome. Too often, services are delivered by women, but decisions are made by men. Just 22 countries have a woman as head of state or government, just 21% of ministers are women, and women parliamentarians make up less than 25% of national legislators. Women have an equal right to speak with authority on the decisions that affect their lives. This is how we will ensure that decisions are inclusive and reflect the needs of the entire population. This is how we will rebuild from a pandemic that has made gender inequality worse, that has pushed more women into poverty, out of jobs, and away from access to educational and medical services, including for sexual and reproductive health. This is how we will solve the urgent challenges of our time, from the pandemic to climate change, to deepening inequalities, conflict, and democratic backsliding. Gender equality is essentially a question of power. But equal power will not happen in itself. This is still a male-dominated world with a male-dominated culture. We need to work together with vision and determination to make equality happen. I'm proud that we have achieved gender parity in UN leadership posts for the first time in history. We must transform social norms. We must put in place laws and policies to support women in leadership, including special measures and quotas with ambitious targets and do far more to appoint women to high-level positions. We must tackle violence against women, both online and offline, so that women's voices are no longer silenced, especially in public life. We must increase access to financing for women candidates, women's organizations, and feminist movements. And we must support women leaders in all their diversity and abilities, including young women, migrant women, indigenous women, women with disabilities, women of color, and LGBTIQ+. The COVID-19 has been a calamity for the world and for women and girls. But it has also forced a reckoning with global inequalities, fragilities, and entrenched gender discrimination. Women must be at the center of the recovery as we make the course corrections that the pandemic has highlighted so vividly. This is a job for all of us. I look forward to working with all of you to advance women's leadership to achieve women's rights, and to build a future based on equality and dignity for all. Thank you. Greetings. My name is Brenda Von Gova, founder of the UN Chamber Music Society. Today's special concert on International Women's Day pays special tribute to the women who have helped to shape classical music history and whose voices have been marginalized. Music is the language of peace. It is universal and symbolizes equality, as it requires no translation and holds the power to encourage gender balance. Throughout the history of classical music, the voices of female composers have been silenced. For example, a lot of people are not aware that Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's sister, Marianne Mozart, was an equally talented musician. However, due to societal views on women at the time, she was discouraged by her parents from showcasing her artistic talents and was simply left to stay at home. For centuries, there was the notion that women could perhaps be talented only in performing, however, never in mind, in other words, in music composing. There is evidence that Mariam composed beautifully. 
Sadly, none of her compositions have survived. As a result, unlike her brother, since her talent was not nurtured, she never made history as a classical musician. Conventional classical music history and current concert hall settings continue to be dominated by male composers such as Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, and Mozart, to name a few. Today, we are at a pivotal moment for women's rights, as we all know that there is no better path to a more peaceful and prosperous world than the empowerment of women through allowing the voices of women to be heard. Classical music history must no longer be replete of female composers. For this reason, the repertoire we are about to perform has been designed in the feminist spirit, featuring only female classical music composers. Our performance celebrates the accomplishments of equally genius female composers by Yuko Uebayashi, Jessica Meyer, Meyer Warshaw, and Fanny Mendelssohn, the sister of the more famous Felix Mendelssohn. These composers worked with and within a male-dominated musical culture. I'd like to thank all the musicians who helped to make this concert a success. I would also like to thank the friends of the UN Chamber Music Society including all the special guest female artists, flutist Carol Winsensei, cellist Gia Kim, violist Kara Rodlin, and Boston Philharmonic Associate Principal Cellist Valera Miragias for their generous support to this concert. May the music you are about to hear today help us all reflect on the International Day of Women and remind us that we are all equal. I thank you. Thank you. 